very good evening to you. You are watching Biz First in Focus. This evening we are going to talk to Mr. Shiran Fernando, the Chief Economist of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, regarding, regarding the recent increase in vehicle duties. Uh, Shiran, let me start off. Now, we know that from time to time the government has made uh, policy decisions to increase duties pertaining to vehicles. This time they have decided to go and take a look at vehicles that are below the engine capacity of 1000, 1000 cc. Mm -hmm and hybrid vehicles also falling in the same category. Firstly, let me ask you, now various people have come forward with various arguments to say this is why the government has increased. And one uh, major reason is that there are too many vehicles in that category running on our roads. Uh, what is the idea that you have pertaining to this particular increase? Um, so, uh, thanks for inviting me to the show. I think, um, so we also did our own analysis, I think, just a few days before this announcement was put out. We looked at the 2017 numbers. Uh, we do this annual vehicle market publication. Um, so what we noticed even with last year was that, um, you know, registrations was, for example, low, um, you know, down by about 9%. Uh, import expenditure totally was high, but that was only because of, you know, the rupee movement and things like that. But in terms of volume, also it was low. But what you had, I think, with last year's budget was this move towards uh, engine capacity, and uh, you know charging based on that. And with that, uh, what happened, I think, was uh, the vehicles under, as you mentioned, uh, became, I think, slightly more affordable um, uh, for for the co for the public to you know go out and purchase. And you saw a lot of those vehicles also being imported. So I don't think it's a case of you know that that argument of you know too many vehicles on the road. But if you look at it in terms of the numbers, mm. I think if you look at uh, last year, for the full year we've had close to about 700 plus uh, million, 700 million dollars mm. imported for the full year. Uh, in this five months alone, we've imported close to 90 percent of that, so slightly right. above 600 million. Um, so that clearly, um, I think, indicates to you, uh, with uh, you know, a bit more incentive with this duty structure as well, uh, where the market has gone with it. So I think you have to look at this uh, vehicle thing also in context of what happened with gold as well. Yeah. Because in the start of the year, especially the first quarter, there was a lot of gold imports coming in mm -hmm. and the central bank was also uh, stating that, you know, there's a lot of uh, imports coming in and that's affecting the rupee and they put a, uh, they ro 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 you know, put up the taxes for that and in April and May we've seen, mm -hmm. you know, almost going to nearly zero. Right. Um, so that's all to curb, I think, on the import expenditure side, which at the end of the day, I think is, have an, having, having an impact on the rupee mm. because more dollars are Coming needed out, to... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shiran, now an interesting point there is that now the government in its budgets have promised to go into a blue-green economy. Sure. Uh, they have highlighted the importance of being environmentally friendly sure. and they also said, advocated for hybrid vehicles, sure. uh, highlighting the fact that they will be environmentally sure. friendly. But here we see that even in the budget, previous budget, the uh, subsidies, the concessions provided for tax concessions provided for hybrid vehicles went up uh, and the same has happened now when the duties are increased when it comes to hybrid vehicles below 1000 cc. So with the government policy, the government's budget policies, the policies that are laid out by the government, does it work with the actions and the policies? So I think you're you're right in, in a certain aspect that there is a bit of a contradiction because uh, you're trying to also encourage uh, these vehicles. So some of it is obviously non-hybrid and some of it is hybrid as well. So I think that's that's the issue with policy as well when you um, try to go with one holistic mm. thing of you know encouraging all these vehicles to uh, more green friendly vehicles to come. You have to balance that up with you know how much uh, how much can you know spend on these expenditures. So I think it's a call more on that Mm. at this particular point. Mm. Uh, but I think interesting to see now from this move what, what really will now transpire. Will it be, you know, once above that or um, at what levels it will or how the market will actually react. Uh, because this year as a whole, if you look at our import expenditure, it's, it's you know, largely three items that have really dominated. Uh, vehicle imports, gold imports at the start of the year and fuel imports. Uh, so if you look at fuel imports, it's really out of the government's control because of it's really dependent on what goes on in mm. largely goes on in global markets. The other two is more controllable, and, I and they have decided to control both of them. Yes, and that's the I think that's what you've seen uh, with them as well to control that earlier bef before it becomes too 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 much of a you know macro problem that they need to then 
move into other measures because as it, as it is even I think there are you know loan to value ratios already put in place for these things as mm -hmm. well. So they've already done all those things in the past and this is the, the, the only measure they could have possibly gone with at this point. So yeah, now if I may ask you this now we know that the government said this is the day we will increase uh, the uh, duties from and we will allow you until the 31st of January next year uh, to make sure that the LCs are released and the vehicles are released from customs. Now, is there an increase on that particular day? Do people run to the stores and buy vehicles like with what happened with gold? Or is it a normal situation where people don't, you know, they don't have anything to do basically? No, I think, I mean, it's based on past contracts and LCs that are open. Yeah. So the time of it coming here is a different day. Mm. Uh, so with the tax changes, that has an impact. Uh, but I mean, I mean that's the thing with uh, policy as well, and that's something even we've highlighted in the last uh, uh, Times budget when it came out as well in our statement that uh, if you're making some of these changes, don't do it overnight. You know, giving you know distorting sometimes the market and things yeah. like that. Give yeah. time for industries, the general public to understand it, uh, you know, to digest it, and then maybe implement it in in you know. Uh, months time or whatever depending on which sector or what type of taxes they're putting in. So and the vehicle duty increase impacts a certain class uh, in society. Uh, the low and middle income earning families are severely affected by this if they were planning to buy a vehicle anytime soon uh, they will have to pay more. But uh, now when we take a look at the gold example and when we take a look at the vehicle example uh, there was a reduction, you just mentioned that there was a reduction in the bu buying of gold. But do you think just because the similar strategy is applied to vehicles, there will be a big impact or the impact will be less? How do you ascertain the impact of this? I don't think it will be as, as uh, great as uh, gold impact because if you go back even with vehicles, it's not the first time this has been done. Uh, there's been periods of cycles where uh, governments of the day, whenever they feel like you know, vehicle imports are out of control, they will put these what you call macro uh, prudential measures such as either a loan to value ratio or raising these taxes. Um, so I think these cycles will continue, there will be obviously be a period of adjustment and then I think people will maybe get used to this, uh, used to these high prices or maybe there will be something else in the market on offer. With that, uh, Shiran, we have to go into a short commercial break. We will be right back. We are talking about the recent increases, increase in vehicle prices. You are watching Biz First in Focus. Welcome back. You are watching Biz First in Focus. We are in discussion with Mr. Shiran Fernando, the Chief Economist of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. Shiran, before we went into the break, we spoke about the reason as to why this increase was done. Now. It is not all doom and gloom when it comes to this price increase. Several vehicles have gone, come down in prices because they have set up a single, a uniform value sure. in terms of the increase. Uh, now, when you take a look at the market, when you take a look at the details that you have collected uh, from the CCC, do you think this is done at the right time? Should they have waited for a long period or should, have, should they have done it earlier than this or was this the right time to do this? Um, so I think you've they've given it about five six months from when it was implemented in november so there's a good six seven months of data i think that they've looked at it for i think it's a question of um, where they could have gone for example in uh, so they've initially looked at this i think um, but i mean if you go back even four or five years or whatnot these kind of changes have happened ad hoc changes have happened um, so i think but the clear thing to see is will they now move out of this kind of taxation based on engine capacity or mm -hmm. where will where will that go and I think that's where maybe the focus will now once again go on the budget uh, to see because I think uh, the other side of this is also with these uh, vehicles coming in as well government revenue also goes up mm -hmm. because you collect higher excise duty and that's something I think the Ministry of Finance has also explained that uh, it will be a hit on them as well mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if there is a huge volume reduction then whatever they're collecting also will be impacted because first five months uh, they were able to be a beneficiary of it even though you know the yeah. dollars were going out um, so it's I think on the balance that they had to make that call um, and then they will, will there be tax increases in other departments to balance this out and the policy is unclear at the moment that is why I'm asking you do you do you know of something that will happen so that the foreign um, uh, finance ministry will be able to balance this out or is it yet to come out into the open um, not that I'm aware of, but I think uh, they definitely do need to 
you you know you go six months into the year you see how much you've actually uh, gained in terms of revenue versus your expenditure mm. um, and what you projected so I think that moment I think probably has come and that's probably one of the reasons for this move as well but they also need to uh, one thing the finance ministry and the central bank have very keen on doing is the stability mm. in, in, in the macro picture uh, which I think they're very keen to keep you know fiscal deficits down current def uh, account deficits down uh, and move into that trajectory so uh, it's all in that balance I feel. Shiran uh, through the 2018 budget there were several reductions done six months seven months later we see that all those uh, things that were reduced are gradually being increased once again uh, we see, it, see this with the pricing formula for fuel coming in, vehicle prices, gold prices increasing. Lots of things have increased mm. uh, in the past few months. Now, the budget is coming back uh, in November. Uh, the finance ministry is in the process of having dialogues with all of these institutions and uh, coming together and formulating the final sure. draft of the budget. So, are we seeing this trend every year? reducing during the budget speech, increasing during the mid, mi middle of the year. Is that what's going to happen? So, no. Um, what they reduced was more of the, I guess, what they call this essential commodity. Mm. So, I mean, for example, fuel mm. wasn't reduced from January 2015. Um, and the move to it is on a pricing formula. And I think that's very reflective of um, global, what's gone on globally, because you've seen almost doubling over the last, uh, over that period. Mm. Um, the others, I think, uh, once again, factors of, you know, six months in, where are we in terms of revenue? Um, because there are certain things that don't go according to plan, like, you know, global trends change, your revenue from uh, external trade, whatever you collect from these duties go down as well. So they need to balance that off and also against, I guess, the development agenda of the mm -hmm. government as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and the interesting thing is this is all in the backdrop of, uh, you know, growth not being as, as high as uh, they would want to. Um, so that's the balance that they have to make right now. Shiran, uh, with these vehicle imports uh, reducing the import taxes being increased, uh, this connects to other sectors as well. We spoke about the uh, impact it has on the economy as a whole, but what sectors do you think will be affected mainly with regards to this tax increase? Um, I think largely it does impact I think at a household level. Um, rather than, you know, at a macro level in terms of industries and transportation there. Mm. Um, obviously, I mean, it'll have, you know, side impacts, I guess, depending on how people evaluate it to the banking and the leasing mm. um, side of things. Uh, but beyond that, I think it will be more just anticipation to see what is sort of next um, in terms of, you know, could they go for um, higher engine capacities? Could it be other classes of vehicles? And where, where that will go? So this move that the government has made to decide to impose this tax based on this engine class, uh, do you think there are plans uh, in terms of the government to come and impose this on a higher engine class as well or do you think this will be it for the mid and the short term uh, future? Um, that is quite difficult to uh, ascertain because I think the policy to move into this was to make it a bit more transparent. Right. Uh, because otherwise it was slightly a bit opaque as to how to, you know, uh, decide on it. Uh, there is a bit of transparency, but with that also you've seen adjustments down and up uh, from November and even now with this recent change as well. Um, so I think it's a very high level policy decision that they will have to make on it. Right now there is no real clarity to s say which way they will uh, go on. This definitely has a political impact as well. People are unhappy when prices of goods increase and when it comes to a thing like gold or, or a material like a vehicle thing like a vehicle, people tend to get upset and uh, see, uh, we, we saw the advertisement made by the United National Party's election campaign coming back into the front uh, where they promised that people will be able to buy uh, vehicles for a cheap amount. Now, once again, uh, going back, uh, the policies of the government seems to be varying from time to time. Now, this from a business perspective is trouble for the investors coming in, for the businessmen who are carrying out businesses here. Uh, my question is from that angle. Now, once again, the government has decided to f go from a price increase overnight, if I may put it that way. So again, this instability in the policies, how do you see this? Um, I wouldn't say instability or anything like that. I think it's more of a reactionary move 
um, towards what is going on because I think if you read even what the central bank has been saying for the last few months or so, if you read some of their statements, they've been talking about this sudden increase and they've also highlighted that it's these um, kind of engine capacity or these kind of vehicles that are, you know, seeing the boom. Mm. Um, so I don't think uh, there is reason to believe that. Uh, but I think these overnight changes and maybe consistency would be a bit more worrying because mm. uh, you are planning your business based on something and then uh, if it changes overnight, there is issue. So um, I wouldn't say it's a total uh, turnaround or anything like that, but that consistency is what we are, we are looking for as well. With that, we have to go into another short commercial break. You are watching Biz First in Focus. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. You're watching Biz First in Focus. Before we went into the break, we spoke about the vehicle tax increase and the impact it has on the economy of the country. We are in discussion with the Chief Economist of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Shiran Fernando. Uh, while thanking you for being here, Shiran, uh, let's now shift gears to the economy of the country and uh, we'll see what is happening in the economy for the past uh, six months. Now, we know that initially in the first few months of the year, we saw that there was an increase in exports. Uh, people involved in the export sector were happy about how things were progressing. Have we seen a similar trend or is there a different story now? So, uh, I think yeah, uh, you're quite right. We've seen export growth, but I think the key worry right now is what's going on globally. Hmm. Uh, because uh, if you just turn on the news, you know, you have President Trump talking about tariffs put in place, China retaliating with their own tariffs and certain products. Um, the European Union is in that mix. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty over Brexit and what that will mean. Um, so, I mean, at the start of the year, for example, we were quite optimistic that, you know, global trade growth will continue. And that has been a, f that has been a key reason why even some of, uh, I mean, our exports have also done well because our demand markets, the US and EU primarily, uh, has seen a better picture. Um, so uh, our worry right now is whether these kind of, uh, you know, uh, talk in terms of global trade and, you know, within 140 to 160 characters, things can change, yeah. uh, whether that will slow down activity. You're already seeing certain signs of it. If you look at some of uh, the indices which mo monitor these activities in the US, for example, you're seeing a bit of sign of it, uh, signs of it. So whether this will once again then derail growth I think is the key uh, question uh, and if that does it then I think some of our export market uh, countries will maybe suffer a bit and that might have an indirect impact on us. I'm just trying to see the whole yeah. cycle th through it. Um, the other side of it is also I think uh, this currency war what is going on because if you look at this year the dollar has strengthened a lot. I think while we acknowledge that the rupee, you know, is depreciated, hit all times low, it's it's against this strengthening U.S. dollar, and on the other side, you've had a very you have, you have had a Chinese currency which is quite which is weakening as well. Mm. Uh, so this trade was whether it will continue, whether the dollar will strengthen more, and the impact will also have to be monitored. Uh, but on the plus side, I think you have to see <laughs> both sides of the coin. Um, we can see if um, you know if global trade growth maybe slows down, maybe uh, oil prices might come off because right. demand is slowing down. So that might be, you know, savings uh, grace on that side of it. And if, uh, for example, the U.S. Uh, shows signs of, you know, slowing down or activity uh, reducing less than expected, hmm. um, then, you know, if the Federal Reserve might think, okay, we, we don't need to hike as ma much, uh, hike interest rates as ma much as we need to. And that might then ease some of the pressure that is right now going on in emerging markets where uh, investors are thinking, you know, let's put in more um, developed markets like the U.S. where you, you're now getting more uh, high interest rate as well. So, um, I mean, there are both sides to it. But to answer your question, I think um, it's, it's uncertain times and it's also a time when Sri Lanka is also getting the, more of their exports story in place with the national export strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. looking at unlocking certain things which were, uh, you know, not being favorable for exports as well. So it's in that backdrop as well, which is quite unfortunate as yeah. well. Uh, Shiran, another point is uh, you mentioned about the international, uh, the foreign countries who are major players in this uh, game trade wars. China has been uh, carrying out very successfully their One Road, One Belt initiative and we saw recently that they had uh, sp the central bank governor spoke about a $1 billion loan coming in as well. Now, we know that countries like China have their political interests as well uh, when it comes to these loans, but uh, 
especially this particular loan that we're talking about and the few that have come in the recent past, are we utilizing them properly when it comes to the economy? So those are uh, what we uh, what we call is from largely I think refinancing because mm. uh, there are what you have maturing uh, Loan, you have a billion yeah. maturing this year you need to be able to refinance it and sometimes some of these proceeds are used for that um, some of them are used to you know meet your import expenditure things like that so but largely I think this is to build up our reserves because we can't continue to have five billion six billion reserves which for this type of economy it's not enough mm. and therefore we get into these currency issues the more you have right now it's about 8.4 billion this billion coming in we're sort of creating a buffer because from next year onwards it's um, the, I mean it does increase a bit more but you can never say where global markets will go mm. and whether it will be difficult for us um, so these kind of loans have been done I mean we've either done it with um, US investors European investors now Chinese investors have seem to have been given a you know a lower rate uh, as well. So uh, markets, there are I mean different financial instruments are available. Uh, it's about managing that cash flow and then utilizing it into projects that we need to finance either through the treasury or things like that. Maturity period of these loans uh, has been a political discussion. They say, look, we obtain loans with a longer maturity period, and this government is obtaining loans with a shorter maturity period. Now, as an economist, as a person who can shed light into this for people who do not understand these sure. uh, terms, is that what's happening or is there a reason behind what's happening? No, so this, the last few, especially these kind of commercial uh, ones, have been for more longer term. So if you look at even uh, some of the uh, sovereign bonds, the dollar bonds that were issued were very much longer term, either yeah. five or ten years, and even this one is about eight years. Mm. Um, so you're spreading that uh, ca cash flow risk. So when, when, when we say eight years, where does that fall? Is it mid-term, short-term, long-term? Um, so it would be about medium-term, mm. between about five to 15 years. Um, because, I mean, typically long-term, you would say about 30, 20 to 30 years, but we don't have that much yeah. of instruments in that. Um, but overall, I mean, even if you look at some of the Sri Lanka development bonds, mm. um, there has been a clear move to... Earlier, I mean, earlier they were going for about one to one and a half years to two years, but now there's a clear shift to get it to three to five years, so that this bunching up doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. Because what has happened is this 2018, 19, 20, where there's mm -hmm. a bit more debt to refinance has been because of this uh, bunching up of debt, and that has cash flow issues. So mm -hmm. that is to ease this. When it comes to the interest rate, uh, people tend to be complaining, uh, raising problems to say that the interest rates have gone up. Uh, there have been several scams that has happened uh, when it comes to the central bank as well. But taking a leaf out of all of that and coming to where we are right now, has the interest rate been affected and why has it been affected? If so. Um, so if you look at the local uh, market, what you call the government securities market, uh, bills and bonds, they have come off this year, for example. If you look at even the sovereign, um, the local dollar bonds also, they have you know reduced uh, in yield as well. So. It's largely, um, you know, a function of uh, what goes on. But you've not really seen um, maybe some of the bank lending rates, for example, coming around, and that depends on, you know, confidence by these institutions to think that, you know, over a more longer period of time, interest rates will come down. So you have this general lag between what goes on in on a daily basis in this local uh, government securities market to what goes on in banks, which are looking to match their portfolios with the loans they give and the deposits they get. Hmm. Um, so that sink, it hasn't still sinked as yet as much as uh, you'd hope if you were looking at interest rates falling. Well, thank you very much, Shiran, for joining us this evening and talking to us about several points, in fact, the vehicle price increase and the economy of the country sure. and how the economy is doing. It's been interesting to talk to you. Uh, that's all we have for you from this first in focus this evening. It's lovely to have you. Take care.